one of our clients conduct an annual employee opinion survey. And of course, one of the questions they ask to managers is, managers, are you growing your people? Are you developing and coaching your employees? And of course, managers say, I'm coaching all the time, right? So how many of you have ever gotten too much growth and development from your manager? All right, I don't see too many hands going up. So same client as employees in this organization, how many of you get coaching and feedback and mentoring from your managers? And guess what employees say? It's not, not a lot. They say, I never get any. So it's like this little plant in the desert. They're not getting a lot of growth and development and watering and feedback and nurturing. And in fact, like this woman who's walking away with the watering can, oftentimes, you know, we get just a couple drops and managers might think, well, that's enough. And so one could ask the question of why is there such a big gap between managers think they're coaching all the time, employees never get any coaching, and that could be a really worthy conversation. But what I want to focus on a little bit is what happens when managers act as if they don't have a watering can or they're walking away with their watering can. So if we look at a spectrum of leadership approaches, thinking that over time, we habituate, we develop a pattern of how we lead. And if we had a continuum, we could put these styles on the continuum. We could think about the leader who walks away with the watering can on one end of a continuum. We might call it laissez-faire leadership. We might think, well, it's just benign neglect. They don't mean to hurt us, but they're not even aware that you know, the, the desert is hot and we're parched and things are drying up. I had a manager that was on this end of the continuum. And I calculated one year how many times we actually spoke and talked about anything related to my performance. Now, I was a virtual employee. We weren't co-located in the same location. But in the course of this one year, I calculated that we talked two and a half hours. And by the way, one of those hours I included at the holiday party. So benign neglect. Of course, what happens to employees? Now, some employees say, I love the autonomy. However, for most of us who are working for this kind of leader, what's the experience like? We feel untethered. We're working really hard. We may not know that we're on track. And we want more. We want more. So that's one end of a continuum. Now, if we look at the other end of the continuum, we could say the extreme opposite would be an autocratic leader. So what does this leader look like? We've probably seen these leaders. Maybe some of us have worked for these leaders. They might be the ones who say, it's my way, the highway, you choose. Or this might be the leader that micromanages. Uh, and what we know is most of us don't like working for this kind of leader. Now, is there a time and place for us to get autocratic? You bet. If this building were on fire, you would not want me to say, talk to the three people next to you. Let's come to consensus. We'll collect all of your ideas. You would want someone. Maybe me, because I've got the mic, so I'm going to be talking the loudest. You would like me to say, everyone out that door, that's where the exit is. Let's huddle in the parking lot. So there's a time and place to be autocratic, but it doesn't work as a pervasive leadership style. So that's the autocratic leader. Now, obviously, there's a point in between. And you might think, well, surely that's the point we want to be at. And you're right. And so the point in between is really a collaborative approach where we partner with and join with our employees and have a coaching style of working with our team members. So we probably all have a sense of what collaborative looks like. It's we're working together on that. We're solving problems together. Uh, it's not my way, your way. It's our way. Let's figure it out together. Now, I'm going to ask you to think about this to say, so where are you on this continuum? Recognizing there's more than just the three points, there's a full spectrum. And if you're like most leaders, and if you're really honest with yourselves, you're going to say, I probably lean to this dot over here. I tell, I give a lot of advice, I direct. It's one of the ways that I add value is by sharing my ideas with people. And what we know is like being autocratic, there is a time and place for us to tell and direct and give advice. However, what we also know is that as an overall leadership approach, what we do is we end up creating dependencies when we, when we have this as our overall style. So if you think of a system, in any system, there's what we do and there's what our employees do. And what we do actually reinforces the behaviors we'll get for our employees. So if you think about 
If your overall style of leading is to direct and tell and give advice, if that's what you're doing, the question is, what behaviors are you reinforcing? So if we're directing and telling and solving problems, then the behaviors that we're reinforcing are going to be employees who come to us with their problems, or they'll wait for us and our direction before they move into action, or they feel less accountability. Because think about it. If my employee comes to me and I say, employee, here's what you should do, and they take those actions, and those actions don't work, whose fault is it? It's mine, because it was my idea. So you get employees who are not as bought in and committed. So the question we want to ask is, is that the, are those the behaviors we want to reinforce? And if those aren't, and most of us would say, no, I don't want employees who are dependent on me and not taking accountability. I want the opposite. So then we have to say, so if we want the opposite, those are the behaviors we want instead, what do I need to do differently? How do I need to lead differently? And here's what we would suggest. Move more into that collaborative zone. Ask more questions. Listen more. Encourage more thinking. And so just to, to reiterate, when we want to have something different happen on the other side, we need to take a look and see what we're doing that's contributing to that. Now, what's hard for many of us is that you have such great experience and expertise, and that's why you were promoted to be in the roles that you're in as leaders. And yet, I've got a magic formula for you, and I am willing to share it with you today. Are you excited? OK. I know. So here's the magic formula. Q times C equals B. If you want to get the maximum benefit from a solution and how you work with your employees, you want to remember that there's two elements to this formula. The quality of the solution multiplied by the employee's commitment to the solution and commitment to implementing it will ultimately give you the benefit. Now let's say you as a leader, you're a very smart person, and on a 1 to 10 scale, the quality of the solution you might offer your employee might be an 8, so darn good solution, and you say, hey, Bob, why don't you try this? And Bob says, oh, okay, yeah, not quite fully bought into it, it's got a little bit of commitment, not full commitment, and arbitrarily, we've assigned these numbers, we can have a benefit of 32. What happens if we coach more? And we say, what do you think, Pam? What, what, is, what is your idea for solving this problem right now? And Pam comes up with a solution. Now, she's not as smart as you are, so it's a decent solution, but it's her solution. And so she's far more committed to it. She's going to have a bigger benefit. We're all going to have a bigger benefit. So if I could leave you with one final thought around this way to kind of shift from that directing and telling and giving advice to something that looks more collaborative and, and remember all the skills that we've looked at in terms of coaching. We want you to coach and get them to come up with their own solutions. It would be to remember the magic formula. Their full commitment toward an idea that might not be as brilliant as yours might still give you a better benefit. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure being with you today.